Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I'm wrapping up this little series on Boy Scout Merit Badge, and this is Flux Core, self-shielded Flux Core, like a hobbyist machine. So the, the Boy Scout has five little steps to do in the practical portion of the Merit Badge, as the pamphlet describes it. And the first thing is uh, tracing initials that are made by soapstone with a weld bead. Probably better to hold off to this uh, to last on this one so that the initials look a little bit better. But this is one of the steps and it's listed as the first one. So with the flux core, it's a little bit like stick welding in that you got a flux slag covering when you're finished that protects the weld. But it's a little different. So it's kind of like MIG, it's kind of like stick. And the next exercise is uh, stacking beads on a piece of metal. I've got just a piece of square tubing here. I think that um, the scout counselors and whatnot are going to have to be a little, give a little leeway on what size of metal is allowed. It's specified in the pamphlet, but it says approximate, so a piece of square tubing supplies enough surface to stack beads on. But the second exercise is just stacking a bunch of beads on a small piece of plate just to get, uh, get lots of practice and learn how to run beads. This is the most bang for the buck in practically any welding exercise you can do. This is how to, this is how to learn. Just run bead after bead on a piece of plate because if you can't run a bead there's no point going on to welding things together if you can't run a decent looking bead so this is number two the uh, just stacking beads side by side it does, doesn't even specify that they have to overlap but it's good to overlap them halfway like this the next thing is a butt joint square groove butt joint I've got a little gap in this one that makes it a little bit easier to see and follow but the gap is not required and if it's too big a gap the machine is going to have to be set really close to not blow holes in it but it is easier to see with a with a small gap and sometimes I do just a little bit of a side-by-side -side motion that really it plays the light you can see it's kind of hard to even see the seam in this case but as the light plays back and forth it kind of comes into focus a little bit better so that's just one way might be a might be something that to help them get through it and next is a t-joint now that butt joint was welded is going to be welded both sides according to the pamphlet and so is this T-joint. Pamphlet says tack it up and weld it both sides. And the last thing is a lap joint tacked up and welded both sides. Pretty much the same technique as a T-joint. No oscillation required or very slight if any is needed. In this case I'm just kind of dragging it and watching the top edge to make sure it kind of consumes that corner. And the only thing I'm going to cover on the how not to weld series, the how not to weld portion here, is um, polarity. I see this as probably the biggest problem is people forgetting to swap polarity when they go to flux core. And you can see all the big BBs of spatter. It is welding. It's joining the two pieces together, but that's a lot of cleanup, and it's annoying to have all that spatter. And it's just not, not welding smoothly at all. But that's, that's due to wrong polarity. Most self-shielding flux core gases... Are designed to be welded with DCEN. That's direct current electrode negative. See it welded okay. Actually the bead looks different but then I gotta scrape off all those BBs. So the way to change polarity or check polarity and see if it's right go inside the cabinet after turning the machine off and look and see which one of these uh, terminals goes to the power block. I see these are labeled with a plus and a minus, and I want to make sure that the electrode negative goes to the power block. Well, in this case, I'm set up at electrode positive here. That's the one going to the power block here. That's what sends power to the contact tip, and that's wrong. So that's, that's the, that is the way you weld bare wire MIG, but it's not the way you weld most self-shielding gases. So the way, to, the way to fix that is just get a wrench and swap them to make sure that the negative side is going to the power block. Now I'm using a Hobart 210 MVP for this video and on that machine has a little panel inside with some instructions and you can see here for steel and flux core the E71T-11 style flux core is self shielded it says set polarity for DCEN but a lot of people ignore that or don't catch it and you can see no shielding gas required and it's good for windy or outdoor applications. So if you're welding a, a fence post outside, this is a good process to, to use, this or stick. Now I've got it plugged up to 230 volt and I'm using 030 diameter wire. And so i got to kind of follow the chart 
to the thickness I'm using and for 1 8 inch thick steel it gives me a recommended setting of 4 on the voltage and 45 on the wire feed speed. Now that doesn't mean anything other than an increment. That's not actual voltage or actual inches a minute and we'd have to count the inches a minute to find out what that is. And if you go, I go thicker metal the settings go up a little bit. So if you get everything set like the chart says you get a whole lot less spatter. A lot smoother weld. Thanks for watching. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com